here. So we've got the North American Star League starting up, and you're part of that. Are you mm. excited for that? Sure. It's uh, very exciting. What do you think about the league as a whole? Do you think it'll be like a competitor with MLG, or just no, good to have? No, that's not like it. No, it's, I think it's completely different leagues. I think they both help the growth of esports in the West. But at the same time, um, I've, like, I, a lot of people will disagree with me. But I think uh, North American needs leagues, like, per se, like, the North American Star League shouldn't have 10 Koreans in it, you know? Just, uh, it's like, people are like, oh, what, you scared of them taking your money? I'm like, sure, yeah. Like, um, can non-Koreans beat Koreans? Sure, they can. Like, they've proved it over over time, you know? Like, if you, if you just look at all the show matches, all the team leagues, whatever, the MRI or whatever, Prime finished last. They lost to to EG, to Team Liquid, to yeah. Root, to everyone. Then um, to Mouse. Then uh, there's been a lot of show matches, a lot of tournaments where Koreans meet non Koreans, uh, meet them, and non Koreans, like, you know, they have a decent win rate ratio against Koreans. But uh, the big thing here is for esports to grow in the West, I think that we need leagues that are focused in the West, much like GSL or GSTL are focused in Korea. You know, you have to go to Korea if you want to compete to them. I'm not saying, oh, you're a Korean, select, <laughs> get the fuck out, you know. I'm not saying that. If you, if you want to come move here to play them, then that's fine. You know, what I'm saying is, if Koreans already have all the, infrastru all the, all the infrastructure and all the price pools, and on top of that, they get access to all of our, our side of the world's price pools, then they have a lot more to work to work for, you know, like, um, whereas if we have this training house, this practice house, and then EG, I think, has one too, you know, like, we're, we're trying our hardest, but then it's discouraging to see MC gets invited to the same tournaments we get invited to, because potentially we're giving $50,000 to or more or less whatever to MC or any other of the 10 non-Koreans so I think for esports to grow on par on the West on par with Korea we need a solid base something that players in the Western Hemisphere can be like okay I'm gonna train for that shit and I'm gonna win it you know and then it's like, okay, I gotta train for that shit, and I'm gonna win it, but maybe MC will win it too. Because, like, you know, sure, we can beat MC, maybe. There's, there's a chance, but it's, you know, it's, <laughs> I don't know. So you think maybe NA, do you think MLG maybe might sort of fill that role a little bit? We, we get a couple of Koreans, or not Koreans, Europeans, here and there in MLG, but for the most part it is pretty much North America. Yeah, sure. I mean, even in Germany there's the... What is that league called? EPS? EPS. EPS is pretty big, right? For the German only? Right. Yeah. It's not German only. If you move to Germany, you can compete in it. Oh, that's right. You know, but that helps, that helps, that things like that help esports grow. Like, I was talking to Sock, um, ATN's uh, sponsors don't give a shit if he wins MLG, but if he wins... E it's EPS. EPS, think, yeah. then he gets a lot more points, you could say. You know, hmm. like... So, um... We need things that are focused towards regions to motivate players to to do good. Sure, no, yeah, I don't mind Europeans coming. I don't mind if Koreans want to come, but they have to fly over here. Right. You know? Like I don't, I don't mind if, if they want to commit to it. I just, I just don't like this like online tournaments or online qualifiers where it's like you know everyone yeah. just <laughs> like if if you want to come, you got to take a risk. You know. Yeah. It's like I can agree you got to pay a lot of money or whatever, take a risk, be like, okay, I'm good enough. But if, if it's online, it's like, you know, I don't know. It's not the same. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess uh, that was some good insight on, you know, uh, Do you agree with sort me, of regional Joshi? pride. I do, to the extent of... Well, don't pussy out. Do you agree with me? I feel like if everyone had to come play in the NASL, that there would be less Koreans invited or even accepting. Yeah, yeah, And the sure. fact that they can just take an afternoon, like, MC yeah, and... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not just talking about the NASL or bashing on the NASL. Right. I'm just talking about esports in and general. And building it in a community. Yeah, if we yeah. want esports to explode in the West and, and, like, 
make it viable for non-Korean players to like you know be as as big as it is in Korea. It will take time, obviously, but it's the way is not to be like okay, let's compete with Koreans because they're the best. So let's the only way to measure is up, you know, because Koreans when they started it was like Koreans against Koreans. I'm sure they have a lot of tournaments where no non-Koreans are yeah. in. You know, like I mean, you have to read Korean. There's language barriers and shit like that. Um, I don't know. I just you you know what I'm saying, though, right? Yeah. Do you understand? <laughs> <laughs> Leave it in the comments. No. <laughs> mm. uh, okay. Okay. Just have a quick addendum. Yeah. So, like I was thinking during my cigarette break, and um, I guess what I'm trying to say is, take sports as an example. Um, basketball, uh, baseball. Nowhere basically outside the U.S. It's viable. Uh, to live off of it as a professional basketball or baseball player, you basically have to move to the U.S., right? So the big question here is do we want esports to just be located in Korea or do we want to make it a global thing, you know? Do we want to expand to Europe and to North America? I'm not talking just on behalf of North America, although, you know, my team's mission, so to say, is always or has always been to be the top North American team. Um, that's our, our thing, you know, like that's why the team was created and that's where our efforts are headed towards. Um, now take soccer as an example, just because soccer is the most global sport you could say, you know, it's like the king of sports, every country plays soccer. Now um, let's take the US as an example. Um, the US sucked at soccer for the longest time because they just didn't have the infrastructure, they just didn't have the players or the fan base to follow soccer for a long time. Now, over the last few years, it's been growing. Um, you know, it's been getting a little bit more popular. And uh, there have been like leagues like the NASL, it's also called the NASL actually. <laughs> so, hey. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Say, Soccer now, it's a, it's like the U.S. right now can compete pretty much with any country out there. Like they can give a good game to any country out there. But say the U.S. just got thrown in with a Bris with Brazil and you know Germany and France, you know from the start. Like they would stand no chance. It would just be discouraging. Now they have leagues where mostly it's I don't know 90 percent North American players competing against each other. So that's a lot more viable, a lot more, uh, you know, you, you can't just take someone who's growing, someone like who, who's starting to get good, who's starting to get into this, and throw him against Ronaldinho and fucking, you know, whoever else. So, <sighs> shit, I thought my analogy was going to be a little bit more consistent, a little bit better. It's all in my head, but I don't know how to explain it too well. The thing is, for esports to grow, you need to start sonifying it. Like, there's world championships, sure, the global world championship of StarCraft, whatever that they were playing, like world against Korea and all that shit, that's good. You know, there's gonna be WCGs too, I'm sure, where you can see, um, you know, non Koreans compete against Koreans and stuff like that. But in order for the, let's call it a sport, to flourish outside of Korea. We need to focus on things outside of Korea and, and, and make leagues outside of Korea that are like winnable or or that have a or, or that you know you you know that I don't give a shit if Kiwi Gaki wins or if uh, you know Noni wins the league but just we need we need our own icons and then you can see Kiwikaki or Noni or wh whoever wins compete against the rest in those global leagues and, and, and see how they measure up. But just measuring them up in every tournament out there is just going to hurt esports as a whole outside of Korea. It's going to make it grow even bigger in Korea. The, the, the big question is is that what we want? Like, do we want esports to be allocated only in Korea? Or do we want to make it a global thing where? you can actually grow and look forward to a tournament knowing that a North American or a European is going to win that tournament 100%. You know, it's it's a lot more... What's the word? I don't know. Personal? Can you help me out Maybe. there? Like, 
I don't know, personal Do you get, community. Do you get what I'm saying, though? Kind of things pop in my head. Yeah. Like homegrown effort so that you can yeah, yeah, identify, exactly. identify sure, the winners. Sure. And it's identifiable and it's, yeah, it, it, that's what it is. It's a homegrown effort. And uh, I think that's what we need to work towards if we want to, that is, if we want to make <laughs> esports outside of Korea as big or comparable to what it is in Korea, you know? Right now, it's pretty fucking sad, to be honest, to read the forums and see, like, every time a Korean loses, it's like, oh, it must have been lag, or it must have been, you know, like, oh, they were, they didn't care, oh, he went carriers, so, like, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty discouraging, like, non-Koreans can't compete with Koreans right now, but for how long? That's, that's, that's a big question, and that's up to you.